This morning, we're going to be talking about some assembly tips and uh, maybe a couple tricks here for SOLIDWORKS, talking about mainly some productivity options here. So as for the agenda this morning, we're going to talk about the different things that we can do with assemblies. So we'll talk a little bit about the user interface and a couple of options in there. We'll also talk about some of the different mating techniques and some of the, the new features here in, in uh, 2020 as well how to organize your assembly, you know, best practices for, for keeping things straight in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, we'll also talk about how the setup of the assembly can affect the performance. We'll give you a couple of examples of that. And then also the assembly tree, how to keep things nice and tidy in there as well. And then finally, at the end of the webcast here, we'll talk about just a little bit on, on the hardware side of things, so CPU, GPU, and uh, some peripherals that might you know, help speed up the process when you're working with maybe large assemblies or maybe just day-to-day -day tasks in assemblies. So first up here is, uh, is uh, some options that are going to be helpful for you. And, and, you know, when it comes to assemblies, especially for larger assemblies, there's a, a setting here that uh, sets uh, several system settings. So here in the large assembly settings area where you can, um, you know, when, it, when the assembly hits a certain threshold, uh, in this case, a number of, of components, then it would set the options down here. You know, this can be beneficial if you've got a lower end PC, maybe you don't have enough RAM or maybe a, a low end video card that's, you know, not capturing everything in the assembly, then uh, you can turn off some of that detail automatically. And then as you're working with assemblies, adding mates, smart mates, and using magnetic components, there's a couple of performance sliders here so you know if, if you like that animation, then you can you can turn it farther to the to the slow end. For me, I like to have it just pop in as as soon as I click on something. It makes it a lot easier to work with this stuff as we're you know adding components, adding mates. Also, there's some options here for lightweight components. So if you're running low on resources, you might want to turn these options on. Also, for out of date components, if those components are loaded lightweight. There's an option here to check. All of these things take some time to do in the background, so that's why I've highlighted them here because, you know, if you want components to, to come in fast, we might not want to check for that. Uh, you'll still get an indication in the assembly tree that shows that the component might be out of date, but it's not going to do that check slowing down the process of, of opening things up. Uh, external reference here, there's actually a couple of new options uh, that have been added here for 2020. Uh, in the past, we had uh, an option here to disable any creation of references that are external to the model when we're when we're creating a model. Uh, but it was simply just an, an on or off, and we couldn't limit it in any way. So now we've got two new options here that I can I can disallow the creation of references uh, or allow, but maybe with a couple of caveats here. So. We might want to keep those references tied only to the top level assembly and not any other components, you know, within sub assemblies or maybe just within the same sub assembly or in the condition of instead of components, maybe only envelope components. So, you know, these are great options. Most times you do need to create a couple of simple references, but you don't want to go you know, maybe several levels deep between, you know, several sub-assemblies or several components. So we can keep these references simple so that they load fast in the future. There's also another little box above that that allows you to search for references. So if you've got um, libraries of components, maybe hardware, motors, um, off-the-shelf parts that you purchase, you could put them all in one custom folder that's maybe not revision managed. Um, for PDM, and you can have SOLIDWORKS set up to search that folder uh, in case references get moved around. You can also include subfolders here, and um, these are good options to keep in mind if you've got library components. Mouse gestures here, um, you know, this kind of applies not just to assemblies, but for all things in SOLIDWORKS. Um, and here you can see I'm actually going to try to add a couple of, of icons. One thing to note here is that, um, you know, when I search for performance, I get three different options here. And that's because one's for parts, one's for assemblies, 
and then ones for drawings. So there's different levels here. Of course, you can drag icons, move them out of the mouse gestures. Um, you have the ability to change from, from two to, to 12 dif different gestures. Um, for me, I think 12 gets a little bit too uh, condensed and, and too hard to hit the command that I, that I want to use. So I think the sweet spot is kind of the, the eight gestures here. Um, and you can see I've added some, some of the icons that I most often use. So things like isolate component, um, assembly performance or our performance evaluation, the preview window for components when we're adding parts within an assembly, some pattern tools, and then move component. A lot of times I like to do a collision detection or a collision um, check for collision. So I can do that easily with that tool. Uh, hotkeys. Uh, this is a really great um, section of the menu here where we can, you know, sort for commands. I can see every single command that's been added inside of SolidWorks. Uh, up at the top, you can see that there's a print list and copy list. So if you want to keep um, a, a printout with all of the commands that you've got assigned, you can easily do that. If we want to add hotkeys to other uh, commands, we can simply search for um, the command, and then just hit the keyboard shortcut that we want to use. If I try to use a keyboard command that's already applied, so for example, consult, control C is copy, it's going to let me know that, hey, I can't use that command. So let's switch to something that I can use. So for example, Alt, Alt C here, and same thing with linear pattern. You can also assign multiple commands to the same feature. So if you use maybe control L or Alt L, then you can assign two different hotkeys to the same command. So very, very handy function. Shortcut bar. Um, I think, you know, th this is one of those things that I put in here because I think it's underutilized for what it does. Um, and, th you know, this menu will pop up whenever you click the S key on your keyboard and you can separate it out by parts, assemblies, drawings and sketches. So you've got, a, you're going to have a different toolbar that pops up for each one of, of those modes. And what the customized window here allows us to do is change the size of the, the menu that pops up. And we can also add other buttons to that menu. Uh, my favorites to add are these flyout toolbars because they have multiple commands that are nested within them. So for example, um, our whole wizard, uh, you know, there's a drop down here, uh, arrow here that lets me pick other options for that. Same thing with reference geometry. So if I click the icon there, I'm going to get not only planes, but axes and, and other references that we might want to add to our assemblies. Um, so utilize that S uh, shortcut bar the next time you go to use create assemblies. So next up, let's talk about some mating techniques here. I think everyone knows the assembly toolbar. Um, we've got that paper clip icon that allows us to add some mates. Um, we can also use a smart mate. There is an icon for that, but you can simply just use the alt key on the keyboard. And then also the context toolbar. Context toolbar is one of my favorite options in SOLIDWORKS. So let's take a look at that. There's some new options that we have here in 2020. So one of the new things that they added was the ability to do slots. So if I pick a surface uh, of a slot, I can add that constraint and also keep it centered on the slot. So there's different options there. Uh, profile center command has been improved this year. So um, one of the things that was missing was the ability to flip that uh, profile center upside down once we completed. So once we complete the command, there's that option to flip the, um, the direction. And then smart mates. So, you know, for this plug here, we want to drag the edge and drop it uh, onto the component or onto the assembly using the alt key. And then the tab key, we can flip the direction of that. So a couple different mating techniques that are going to help speed up that process. Of course, we can use things like flexible, flexible component here. So the hinge can move within the assembly and we can also add 
Uh, now a limit distance. So again, this is one of those context mates that have been added this year for 2020. So we can now limit the distance here. We've got all the options for that limit mate right here on the screen and it saves us a whole ton of time without having to go into that dialog box uh, on the left. Everything is right here in the heads up display. So next up, um, you know, revising mates. One of the easy ways to find mates for components is to simply just drill down into the assembly tree and find the mate. At the very bottom of the tree, of course, we also see that same mate. So in this case, the profile center 303. But the difference here is you'll notice that there's a uh, uh, down at the bottom here, it actually tells us the component that it's attached to on both ends. So the screw and then this, um, this tube carriage. These arrows that we see here are actually part of something called a dynamic reference visual visualization. And you can turn this on from the very top of the tree. So if you right click on that assembly icon, um, you can turn on both um, child and parent dependents here. And that's what these, these arrow lines are. And these are a great reference to kind of help you find exactly not only which components it, it's attached to, but also which feature it's attached to. So for example, the screw here, it's using a profile center of some face from the base body feature. Breadcrumbs, this is probably one of my Another one of my favorite features or a way to edit components. Um, it's this uh, little section of icons that pop up next to the cursor. Now, in the past, we used to have to use the, uh, the, the D key in order to bring that to the cursor. But now in 2020, there's an option here to just automatically bring that to the mouse pointer. So you don't have to hit any key anymore. So let's take a look at that. So for example, here, this plate, if we want to take a look at the, uh, the components here, we can see all of the subassemblies. If we click on one of those, it also highlights in the tree over on the left. And we can easily find a mate that we want to edit. Go to edit mode on the mate. We can change the mate. So for example, here I'm switching here to a distance mate to kind of give a little bit of a, an offset between the surfaces there. And then I can complete that command. It's so a very easy way to find mates to be able to edit those. Now, another way that we could edit is with the view mates tool. A um, little bit different procedure here, but the same thing. We're going to take a look at the same component and we're going to switch this back to a coincident mate. So same method using breadcrumbs here, we can find the component that we want, but maybe instead we'll use view mates to take a look at the different mates that are associated with that assembly. So it's only going to limit us with the mates that are attached to that, and it isolates any components that are um, being mated to within that component. So if you need to be able to you know, identify uh, related parts around the component that you're, that you're mating to, ViewMates is a great way to do that. Let's talk a little bit more about um, organization. So display states are one of those ways that we can do that. Display states are listed from the configuration manager down here at the bottom. And you know while you're in that display state, anything that you change, maybe hide components or change um, the display of those bodies that can be um, attached to that display state. One thing that's nice here is that the, the display state, to be able to switch that is right here at the top of the feature tree. So this little arrow here allows us to switch between those display states quick and, and easily. Um, they also work in the drawing mode as well. So, you know, in this example here, the, the display state is showing uh, some, some hidden line or wireframe geometry for the internal views here. So if we wanted that specific view on the drawing, we could easily um, use that and show that on a drawing. And then as far as the feature tree goes, 
um, it's always good to um, keep things organized here. So for example, we've got um, a number of sub-assemblies that, that are grouping components together. We do have some top-level components here that are organized by folders, and it can be hard to track you know, where these are at. So we've got different named areas of the components for those, um, for those sections. I've got all my patterns that are also placed into a folder down here and notice that the names of the patterns are intelligent so that if I need to be able to find components, I can easily identify what's going on. So using sub-assemblies to group components together, um, folders to group components at the top level that need to move around, and then naming features to easily be able to find them in the future. Next up is assembly performance. Now, one of the great things about SOLIDWORKS is the ability to add um, design intent or in-context um, features that um, need to rebuild uh, you know, next to one another. Um, however, this can increase your rebuild time. So the more of these that you add, uh, the longer it's gonna take SOLIDWORKS to um, perform that task. So, and that's fine while you're in that kind of design phase. But when you kind of uh, reach uh, a point in the in the design where you know you know things aren't going to change anymore, um, you want to kind of lock things down so that it so that they don't accidentally change. Um, if a component has a reference to it, you can right click on that part and go to external references, like I'm showing here. And there's these two buttons, the lock and break, so you can lock features with the ability to unlock them in the future if you need to edit them. And then the break feature um, means that, you know, you're never, it's never going to be up based on those, those references anymore in the future. And then there's also a couple of options here for the break where, you know, if you want to replace those references, you can automatically replace them with fixed relations. Or if you wanted to migrate the original features that defined that, you can bring those into um, into those parts as derived parts or for derived parts. Evaluating performance is another thing that um, can help you identify maybe what's taking a long time uh, in your assemblies. So in the case of this assembly here, it's, it's um, mostly good. But uh, we'll notice here that the graphics triangles has a, an exclamation point here. So we need to do something about this component. And the nice thing about this window is, is it allows you to um, actually make changes or, or find the components without having to go hunt them down in the assembly. So we have these open document uh, buttons right here within this, this window. So for example, this connector here, this off the shelf component, Let's take a look at why this has got so many graphics triangles in it. Um, for parts like this, where you know you might be purchasing them, they probably don't need all this detail. So we can go in here to the image quality on the document settings and just slide this down a little bit so that it's not going to uh, take up so many, so much graphics in the background. And you know, changing it down quite significantly there doesn't really remove too much detail and that seems to look okay. So we'll go ahead and save the changes there, go back into our assembly, and then let's take a quick look at the uh, performance evaluation again. So I've done this on the uh, mouse gesture there. I can get to it very quickly. So now we can see that that elbow, we've reduced it by about 400,000 triangles. You know, and for that component, there's 24 different instances in there. So that's gonna save quite a bit of time as far as performance goes. Next up, the assembly tree. So I've got two different statistics here of the same assembly. Um, and without knowing really what's going on, if we take a look at the number of components here, um, also the number of top level components and the number of evaluated mates. And if we take a look here, the, the number of top level components is, is significantly higher with the assembly on the right. And that's because of one thing that I did, which was reduce the number of subassemblies. So just by taking and ungrouping some of those subassemblies, it adds, you know, 
quite a bit more mates to the top level of that assembly. And the more mates that you have at the top level, the slower that performance is going to be. So the point is here, if you um, combine those components into smaller, more manageable subassemblies, you're going to increase your performance overall. Finally, let's take a look at some hardware. When it comes to processors, of course, there are many, many to choose from, and you know I've got a lot of work to do. So, uh, do we choose AMD or Intel? Do we go with a core processor or a Xenon processor? Um, what's the goal here? Do we want to use it for rendering, for simulation, or just for standard SolidWorks work? Um, and of course, faster is better, right? Of course, there's you know a lot more to that. Um, there's a company uh, local to us here in, in the, the Puget Sound, um, Puget Systems, that they do a lot of uh, articles here on, on testing. And these guys have done their homework when it comes to processors. They've, they've tested all kinds of stuff when it comes to SolidWorks. Um, you know, take a look at, at some of this, uh, some of the articles on their site. They've got a lot of really good information here. Um, so faster is not always better. It really depends on, you know, what you're going to be using the computer for. For GPUs, this is probably the number one cause of system instability that we see um, with tech support calls here. Um, specifically with NVIDIA cards, um, they there's a an option for NVIDIA that you can um, it, it will piggyback off of the integrated or dedicated um, or integrated graphics processor that's on the motherboard. Um, this can kind of cause some problems with SolidWorks, especially on the mobile platforms. So there is an option in your NVIDIA settings if you think that you might have um, an, uh, an integrated graphics card, then you know go to go into your settings here and choose the high performance NVIDIA processor. Um, instead of using the, the combined or maybe even the integrated graphics. Um, also make sure that you're updated to the latest certified drivers. So I've, kinda, I've got a, um, a couple of images here from the two different uh, main vendors that we see. So uh, AMD uh, with their Fire Pro drivers, they pretty much just have uh, one uh, unified driver that they support. For all of their cards, it's pretty simple. You just download that that latest version. Um, for NVIDIA, it's a little bit different. Um, they've got an, an optimal driver for enterprise. Um, that driver is uh, they release those slower, and they're also they also go through a certification process as they release them. Um, there is a another option under that download type called um, a new feature or future features. Um, it's kind of more like a beta driver, I would stay to try to stay clear of those unless you really want to try out the latest and greatest options. Um, but for you know optimal experience as far as SolidWorks goes, I would stick with that enterprise driver. And of course, SolidWorks does their own testing as well for components and systems. So if you go to the SolidWorks video card testing site, you can find your computer, your computer vendor, or if you are just wanting to look at specific video cards, you can choose the option for any there and find a specific card that you were looking for. Um, and this not only will tell you if it's been tested and certified by SolidWorks, but it'll also let you know which graphics drivers you might need to use for that version of SolidWorks. Um, they don't test, SolidWorks doesn't test every single brand new uh, driver that comes out, but they do um, you know, test uh, quite often on these. Next up is peripherals, and I'm, I'm highlighting um, 3D Connection here because I use one of these all the time. Um, and when I used to work uh, in industry, I used one of these um, every single day. And it's kind of the extension of, of your, you know, of your hand. And once you get used to it, you really don't want to, you don't want to let it go. Um, there are several different options on the 3D Connection uh, site there. 
Uh, you can get just a simple puck without any buttons on it, or you can get uh, you know options that that have lots of different hotkeys. Um, and these can really speed up the productivity, you know, uh, for day to day use uh, because you can you can be you know manipulating the view, uh, you know, adding things like fillets or mates um, while you're you know, while you're manipulating the view, you don't have to, to take your hands off of, uh, you know, the, the view manipulation or your, your cursor at any point in time. Um, and there are six degrees of freedom. So forward, back, left and right, and then also twisting in, in X, Y, and Z. So um, great products to use. I would highly suggest um, taking a look at what 3D Connection has to offer. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap up today's topics. Um, thank you all for joining today. And with that, I'm going to thank everyone. And uh, we'll stick around for some questions. But um, if you don't have any, any questions, thank you for, uh, for joining.